Hello everybody, Walter here. Welcome to episode 38 of my Oxygen Not Included Let's Play series with the Space Dot DLC. In the previous episode, we started exploiting the various resources on the space map by launching our very first mining rocket. And today I would like to start taming the magma volcanoes on the main asteroid to get some food for our stone hedges in the future. So, without further ado, let's jump back into the game and have a look. And we're back at the spaceport, which is still filled with the steam from the latest mining rocket launch. Now, this actually looks like a decent amount of hydrogen in here, so let's have a look. Okay, this is around 600 kilograms. I need 450 for the nearest point of interest. You know what? I'm going to send off the rocket right now, so I'm not going to get distracted or forget about it later on. So, I need 450 kilograms to get to the nearest point of interest, which is this one here, and I return as well, which should take just a few moments to pump in. Over here, let's quickly, while we're waiting on that, explain how the drill cone works, uh, since I missed that last time. Basically, you fill it with diamond up to a ton, and when the mining rocket is on top of one of those points of interest, it will turn one unit of diamond into 20 units of whatever material is in here, according to the percentages here. In this case, it's only solids. And it can, at total, have up to 71.6 tons. Although this will replenish slowly over time. So we'll be able to come back later. Now let's have a look. How much do we have in there? Okay, with that, uh, with what we have in the pipes, that should be enough. So let's turn off the pump again. And let's hope that we are not getting any of this here of gassing. Uh, through the pipes. Yeah, definitely enough. As you can see, when I send this off, yeah, definitely more than I need. And uh, I was a little bit too slow. We got a little bit of hydrogen off gassing. Uh, of course, it's getting displaced with the steam in here, but it's a bit annoying. Nevertheless, uh, let's check the crew. It was Ashkan, if I remember correctly. Yes. Now, one more check. What is the food in here? Uh, food up there. Berry sludge. So we have to make sure that Ashkan can actually eat the berry sludge. So Ashkan, Ashkan, Ashkan pilot. Ashkan pilot. And then we have the berry sludge all the way over here. Okay, Ashkan is already allowed to eat berry sludge. Which means I can send off the rocket without any issue. Okay, let's just speed this up a bit. And there is Ashkan. And the rocket is on its way. Very nice. Now we can concentrate on other stuff while this here is producing a good amount of liquid hydrogen off screen. Now, the first step I would like to do when taming those volcanoes over here is actually getting a faster way to get in here. Uh, because currently I need to go to the very bottom here, go through this checkpoint and then back up again. And that is obviously a waste of time and uh, dupe labor. So I think I'm just going to put in a little checkpoint in, yeah, in here. And four cycles later, a few things have changed. For one, I decided to also put in a transit tube access and power all of this here via some 50 kilowatt wire since I will have some power requirements for that over here anyway, so I might as well start on that. For the other, I decided to replace a couple pipes over here with ceramic to avoid the off gassing as far as possible. And now for the main reason why I stopped actually is we have found another planetoid. Hiltial. So let's have a look on the space map. Likely over here. Yeah. We have found the Regulate asteroid. Okay, that is nice to know. So, first things first, the explorer needs to get a new target. And let's see. If I get up here, I would have nine. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that should be safe. So, let's get over here, explore the rest of the space, and then get back home. These over here are still mining. Okay, this one here is two-thirds done already. This one here, only one-fifth left. Okay, 
those should return pretty soon too. So I might as well wait on them before I send off the rocket. Or I still need my builders over here, at least one, so I'm going to change the crew. So I am going to keep Ruby 2 out of here. And instead I'm going to replace him with Pi. Or, yeah, let's go with Pi. Okay, so, target is orbit, obviously. And I do have everything I need, I suspect. Yeah. So, let's launch and get uh, this on the way. So. And I have unreachable food. I should make sure that both are allowed to eat what is in there. So, consumables, this is... Pi and Gossman. And then over here. Ah, come on. Let's stop. For some reason this keeps resetting. So, very sludge. Yeah, okay. So now they should also be able to actually eat what can be found. Oh, where did this switch? What can be found here. Very sludge and some chart heart. Okay. So, those are now on the way. This is being replaced, which is also good to see. And yeah, I still need to continue building over here so I can actually start working on this here. And here we go, the checkpoint is done in the intermediate time. The rockets also already landed. Here you can see my two miners. The first is already cleared out. The second is just waiting on being cleaned out via this conveyor. And yeah, it was definitely a good idea to put in an extra chute just for the rockets or this one here would take at least twice as long. And it appears we occasionally get some liquid oxygen off gassing in here, which is a bit unfortunate, but we can't really do anything about this. We also have a decent amount of liquid hydrogen, so let's actually turn on the pump and fill those two. So for that, let's also set the new target, which will be the old target. This can already go, okay. And this one here still needs a bit more fuel, so we will have to wait until all of this here is filled. And the liquid hydrogen here starts looping, hopefully without off-gassing too much. And we get our first few shot down asteroids from this, uh, or meteorites from this meteor shower, okay. Nice to see how this is working. But before I get distracted again, let's have a look at the space map here. So first of all, the explorer can get back to home base and the conqueror needs to land. And you know the drill. First, I need to land with both my dupes. Uh, let's say, where do I have some materials? Uh, over here I have some materials. Then I obviously need to get rid of those landing platforms here. Also get my hand on some materials. And then, obviously I need to build the rocket platform. For example, over here. And a couple ladders so my tubes can actually reach the inside of the spacefarer module. And then I just need to land the rocket. And now let's have a quick look. There is, okay, here is the steam vent, and I think there is a building hidden behind this area here, but for now, I'm just going to land. And then get back home. Yeah, and launch. I won't really replace those here. They will get damaged later on anyway when the meteor showers become, uh, come down. Because the regulate asteroid actually gets meteor showers. So that would be a bit annoying to build in the obsidian ladders and then having to replace them the next time I can I come back over here. So anyway, those are 
properly filled in, which is looking good. And that means I can actually launch those two. So the target have already been selected. So all I need to do is well, get the crew in and launch the rockets again. And oh, we have some debris lying around. Okay, that is a bit annoying, but not much of an issue. And that's the two rockets on their way. As intended. Okay. And I've sent them both back to this one here since in the intermediate time it had enough time to refill to the equivalent of two rockets. Okay, we have a um, entombed building. Okay, we have some debris that has been overheated down here. Also up there. So we'll have to clear that out. And we also have a uh, couple principles. So I don't really need another pilot. Operating suit we're supplying. Don't really need another dupe right now. Some more food is always nice. Yeah, let's go for that. Okay. And now with all of that out of the way, it's time to continue over here. I have now the checkpoint working, everything is accessible, and I can start working on taming those volcanoes here. And for those two here, I'm going to go with the same setup, which is going to start with a conveyor rail out of steel at the very lowest layer. I will have to do this layer by layer. So uh, first I need to get these here in. Next, I need a layer of refined carbon at the very bottom. And the way to do that is placing temp shift plates out of coal in this area here. But if I just place them, I will get uh, buried objects. So I am going to place one here that should solidify the magma in those two spots. Then I can grab the debris, place it on top of here, use it as an energy reserve, and then build the tiles from the right to the left. And that worked like a charm. So I now have my smooth layer of refined carbon here. And down here, I'm just waiting for this temp shift plate here to heat up a little bit more via heat transferred from over there. And in a minute or two, we should get the message that it melted or well, turned into refined carbon. Now, let's get to the tema here. And I am basically using a design I found online years ago by Psyro. I'll put a link in the description. I am just making a few minute modifications to it, but for the most part, I'm leaving it as is. But before I actually get started, one thing I should potentially do is make sure that the magma doesn't flow towards the left and destroy parts of my building uh, down here similarly. So I will also have to remove that. Just making sure this is done first. Next up, I need a couple insulated tiles out of ceramic on each side here and the rest can be igneous rock. Then floor here, then above the volcano I need a layer of diamond tiles. And this one here I'm actually going to raise just a little bit and the temp shift plate down here just turned into refined carbon. Very nice to see that. Now, next up, I am going to start with some shipping parts. So first a steel auto sweeper, then a conveyor loader. And I really must make sure everything in here is out of steel or it will overheat sooner or later. Following that, a tile in this spot here. And then on top, a mechanized airlock. Then I'm actually going to leave that out for now so my tubes can still work on the inside there. Then I need a timer sensor, a thermal sensor here and there. On top of this one here, an additional window tile. Then below this one here, I need a liquid vent. Then next to that, a smart battery and a thermal aqua tuner. And that's the end of this room here. Gets closed off like so. Then I have another room going up there. This will be three high. And then we have the ceiling going down here. 
And I still need to get in there. And I also need to get in here. I also need a wall there and a wall here. Oh no, I keep that open. I also need to keep this open so I can get the liquids in. Those letters need to go. Those letters need to go. All in all. Um, that is most of this done. Now let's talk about piping first. And let's go with Igneous Rock. So this is the output of the steam turbine. Then I have the aqua tuna here. Input of the aqua tuna, output of the aqua tuna, then over here, up there. Let's go with iron, uh, gold, I don't need aluminium for this. Then going through here, closing this off. Then a thermal sensor right in there. That is the pipes done. Now for power. Uh, and this one here actually needs to be removed. Then for power, as I said, I need to go down here. And then connect to this one here. Connect over there and also to this spot. That should be all of the power required in here. Then, next on the agenda, let's have a look at the shipping. I need a couple conveyors. First from the loader in here, then we go around about. Then up here to the middle, up, over, then we close the loop, go to down, then over here from this spot, and here then I can switch to iron, or so, over there, down, and to this spot here, then from here all the way up, down, over, and out. That will be the output. And this insulated tile is not really needed, so I'll leave it out. Okay, I am still missing a couple conveyor bridges, so I need a bridge here and another bridge here. Then I need a bridge going up here, and the other ones should be out of steel, just to be on the safe side here and here. Okay, that's the conveyors done, and uh, I will wait with the automation until. I have built everything else here. So there we go, most of the buildings are in place. I already put in a layer of petroleum as is the plan from the very beginning. And also put in a couple pipes to put in the amounts of water I am going to need. Without the danger of a tube bringing a bottle and then letting it fall down here into the magma at the bottom and filling all of the sea with steam, which would be an absolute catastrophe. But let's get started on the automation. First, I am going to grab myself a filter gate. So, that is going to go down there. Then I am going to need a buffer gate up here. Then a knot gate down here. Then I'm going to need one end gate here and a second end gate right there. I'm also going to need a Another not gate there, followed by another filter gate in this spot. And a thermal sensor above that. Now for, yeah, let's start with a single bridge in this spot. And then wire. Just connecting this one here, then, then up there. And this one here connects those two, and this one there. Then this one here goes over there. This one goes through the gate and then to this gate entrance this one here connects to the door then i have this one here which goes into this input and also all the way up there then this up there this down there and then finally this one there that should be all of the necessary wiring for the automation and now it's time to put in the correct settings so first of all my output temperature i want to be at let's say 25 degrees then here I need 3 seconds. Then the smart battery needs to be set to between 25 and 50%. This one here needs to be 1 minute or 60 seconds. Then the temp sensor here is above 195. This one here is on for 12 and off for 110 about. I could also go with 120, but it doesn't make much of a difference overall. Now this here is above 500. 
This one here is three seconds again. And up here I have above 190 degrees. So that's all of the settings. Next up is filling all of the chambers. So I need to close this off, fill it with water. I need to put in the missing tile over here, then fill this with water, close this off, put in a layer of liquid, put in the steam turbine, close this off at those corners here. Then I can also close off over here. Put in the missing temp shift plates at the top here and then at the very last point I will put in them in the bottom here. But I will for now until this here is also filled with water and closed off then I can put them in. What I'm also still missing is a liquid vent over here. For just to be on the safe side I'm going to use steel here. Then a ceramic pipe to the side. And as I said, now I need to fill all of this and I also will check what I can print out. So let's see, don't need a rancher, don't need dirt, yeah, whatever. let's go with the dirt. You can't have too much dirt in this game. And now I need to finish this and obviously I need to make the same modifications and setups at the bottom here. And now while I'm waiting on this reservoir here to be filled, let's have a quick look at the top because this here is pretty much done at the bottom half at least and we are just about to erupt there. So first things first, I need to get rid of this tile here and put in three temp shift plates. This all needs to be done right now. While my tubes are on that, I can plan the next step which is a mechanized airlock at the top there. Let's go a bit higher with the priority for this one too. Then window tiles on top. Then a wall and a ceiling over here. Over on the left I'm going to need a heavy rod conductive plate or joint plate because this is where I'm going to place another aqua tuner tuna like so then we need some pipes i'm not going with an extra reservoir here uh, since this here it would if i'm unlucky enough uh, overheat or boil off and that is not something i would like uh, then cooling look over here now before i put that in one Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, yeah, okay. So, then the connection here, connection there, connection down. Here I need to obviously cut this off. Put in a bridge, then liquid vent, then a bridge in opposite direction, radiant pipe. And power for the steam turbines to this spot. Connect here. Then I need a joint plate to the top at this height. Connecting here, I need a joint plate to the bottom at this height. I could build it also down there though. Yeah, I'm going to build it at the bottom there. So for now, I'm just going to go down to this spot here. And once this is all in place, I can place the joint plate here. Then I can go down all the way to the bottom here. And this will be in line with this one here later on. So let's see, like so. Connect over here, one higher. And then later on also connect down here. Okay, that is the power wire done. I am still missing a couple things. For one, I need a bottle emptier. I will also need a way to get some more water in here, although I could do this with some ice if I really wanted. Yeah, I'm going to do this with some ice later. Okay, so this all needs to be built. Then down here, I need an obsidian storage bin very quickly. 
And once that is in place, I can close this here off. And that is pretty much all I need to do here for now. Obviously, I also will need a bit of a ceiling. Like so. Uh, and for now, I should make sure I can reach everything in here. Yep, that should be all I need. This is no longer needed. Okay, that looks good. Now in the meantime, I also found one more asteroid, Udarilius, uh, but that is something I will worry about next episode. For now, I want to concentrate on these two setups here. And Gosman is just about to finish with this build here. And there we go, this is now done. In the intermediate time, I fixed the missing power wire and automation wire I forgot about, and also added a temp shift plate layer here to transfer the heat a bit more efficiently. Plus, obviously, the steam turbines in the chamber at the top there. And with that done, all that's left is setting this one here to accept all, the lander here with a slightly higher priority, and this will run a Alone without me having to do anything. As you can see here, this thing erupted twice in the intermediate time. I already have 220 degree hot steam up here. And this is also slightly above working temperature, so I can start this off. First this one here, then this one here with slightly higher priority. And now all that's left is resetting the timer here a few more times until I have this here completely looping around. Let's just speed this up a bit. And then I can show you very easily how this is supposed to work. And one last time. And there you go. Okay, this is now backlogging a bit since, uh, well, I haven't put in an actual output, which I should do right now if I do anything else. So. Just going to follow the power wire, similarly over here. Just going to run this all the way to here, then down, then over, and then to the outside there. That needs to be done ASAP or anything else. Then while I'm here, I might as well connect the power wire because I also in the immediate time cut off this section here and since all of the volcanoes at the top here are now tamed I can also now get rid of this intermediate barrier here. And here we go this is now all opened up and properly oxygenated. While I was there I also added another transit tube towards the bottom here so my tubes get down here much faster which will become useful in a moment. I also had to add a bridge here and a bridge there since the system wasn't really sure which way uh, the packets were to be sent off, but now it works as intended. And both systems actually are already working. Now let me show you a quick demonstration. So basically what happens is this system here will every two minutes about reset and send a 12 second signal which trans lays into 12 of those packets here, put onto this rail, displacing another 12 into this rail, which displaces the former content of these over to here. And then finally the content of those 12 rails here is output in a row, as you can see here. And the idea is to first cool it down to maybe a couple hundred degrees, then about 200 degrees, and then finally to 25 degrees, but I don't think the system here will actually be able to get that down to that low temperature since um, well, it is going to be somewhat uh, overhelped with the amount of magma that is going to put, be put in into the system. And with that said, let's actually get down here and work on taming this last volcano here. And for that, I'm going with a much, much simpler approach. Basically, I'm going to pump the magma from down here and divide half into this one here and half into this one here, which is the reason I have those liquid vents here waiting. But I'm getting ahead of myself a bit. So first of all, I need a little reservoir down here out of ceramic. 
then yeah let's just to be sure he was keramic here then this goes down to this spot here and for now i'll keep that open here and here so my dupes can get in should add another ladder here temporarily so i can as i said get in there then next up a layer of igneous rock around to make sure that it doesn't boil my atmosphere since the heat will slowly get through the system then next up over here i will have my surface pump and my surface pump will sit on this very ledge here and will be cooled via a layer of and for that i'm going to need a temporary bottle empty here a layer of nafta so first things first let's get in this box in and then also around 30 to 40 kilograms of nafta and now it's time for the pump so let's grab ourselves a liquid pump out of steel this goes right there then i need a couple ceramic bridges in those spots those need to be connected here this one needs to be connected there this one here will be the output then let's see i need also a liquid valve i'm going with steel in case this here has a meltdown it will still overheat but it won't actually melt itself which is rather important i would say now this will need power and yeah i'm going to add the power in this corner here we are uh, my no vacuum chamber right there so this will be the output going right down there obviously in here i'm going to go with steel once more just to be as i said on the safe side okay then this one here needs to go and needs to be replaced with a liquid vent and i also need to put in the rest of this here yeah let's just make sure this is all insulated properly and everything is now in place i also already set the valve to the correct setting and now it's time to show you how this surface pump here works or well, to first run this and first time to prime this liquid filter here so the idea is the pump here checks in those four spots for liquids and then it runs but it actually pumps out in those five spots here so this spot here can be a liquid like for example nafta and it will still pump out a liquid in this spot or also in this spot here without actually getting in contact with the pump or the pump with the liquid and that is how a surface pump works in general so let me quickly show you this in action I have some molten gold that accidentally happened and um, yeah once a dupe comes by you should very soon see this here in action so anyone okay there they are so and it immediately disappeared because now it should be yeah you can see molten gold just appeared is being moved through here obviously it doesn't get removed via the filter here and will end up over here in the output of this here. and that is exactly what is going to happen with the magma now one last thing i would like to do is add a hydro sensor here at the bottom so it only starts pumping when there is actually something to pump out and it's not wasting all of the power this needs to be built first then i'm going to close this off and here i'm going to use a normal tile out of obsidian since this will exchange heat with the nafta which will exchange heat with the liquid pump which is very important because the liquid pump might overheat otherwise since it produces heat and uh, it's in a vacuum itself so this little tile here works as the cooling system for this liquid pump now if anything goes wrong all i need to do is put a tile in here 
and this here is insulated and I won't boil my atmosphere. So then let's cut this off again since we don't need this for now. As I said, this needs to be built and I also need to deal with the output of this one here. So let's see, where does this come from? So this one here needs to connect to this one here. And let's just quickly stop. Since this here is actually water and I don't want any water in there, obviously. Um, this is the only real downside of this design I found. If any kind of gas gets in here, uh, the whole thing goes to hell. So um, yeah, you have to be very careful when you have a bypass or an additional input like this here. So anyway, how much? Uh, and I'm completely out of ceramic, it appears. Okay. Then for now, let's use um, igneous rock. At a later point, I am going to exchange it to something a bit more heat resistant. So this all needs to be built. Once that is all in place, I'm going to prioritize this part here. And once that is in place, I'm going to close this part down here off. And then I can also get rid of this barrier here. And then the last part that needs to be dealt with is this overheated rest of magma at the very bottom. But that is something for the next episode, I would say. And with this, I'm happy to say that we have now finally tamed every single volcano and geyser on this planetoid here, which took a decent amount of time. But now we are making use of all of the natural resources on this map here. As you can see, the magma is already flowing from the previous eruption that happened in the intermediate time. And oh, the magma is already finding its way all the way to the top to our two themas here, half into this one, half into this one here. And yeah, with that we should make sure that the magma is dealt with as those two here are not being overheld. And with that we have reached the actual end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share and comment if you did so. It really helps with the algorithm. Independent of that, I wish you a nice day and well, see ya!